Do you want to form an alliance with me? Absolutely, I do. Good, good, excellent. Okay, now we need to figure out who's vulnerable and who's protected. With the release of Stellaris 3.3 Libra, the Unity update, we have had a massive change to the way influence is generated. In this video, I'm gonna break down how we can generate influence and what we can do to maximize our overall gain. The first thing you can do to get more influence actually starts very early on in the game before you even begin. When you're at the Empire creation screen, if you choose a Gestalt consciousness for your ethic for your civilization, meaning you're either going to be a machine intelligence or alternatively be a hive mind, well, when you choose that, you get plus one monthly influence right out of the gate. That means you're going to be starting with a minimum of four extra influence every month and that is really quite useful. Now it's important to remember the base influence you're going to be getting is plus three. And then diplomatic agreements, that is things like defensive pacts, research agreements, migration treaties, they are going to drain your influence every month. You're going to have an upkeep cost for those. So if you want to maximize your influence gain, make sure you don't have any diplomatic agreements. And if you're enjoying this video, please, influence that like button. As a hive mind, you will also get access to the autonomous agents technology. Now this one's going to give you plus one monthly influence in addition to the plus one you're getting being a Gestalt consciousness. Please bear in mind though, this is a relic of previous editions. Personally, I think it's something that was just slightly overlooked and I suspect they may remove this additional influence gain that Gestalt Consciousness have access to in future patches because I don't think they've intended it to be this way. Originally, regular biological species had access to factions and factions would gain influence. Now, however, in 3.3 Libra, factions produce unity rather than influence. So it's a bit weird that Gestalt Consciousness still get some influence income uh, to balance them with the regular biological empires. Finally, the last mechanic we have to increase our influence generation every month is power projection. This one is rather new. How on earth does it work? Well, we can get up to two extra influence per month from our power projection. And this is scaled depending on the number of ships we have deployed. And also it's based on our empire size, what used to be called empire sprawl. So what you need to do is you must have a naval capacity usage equal to half that of your empire size. In this case, we have an empire size of 56. So in order to maximize our power projection, we would need to have a naval capacity usage of 28. But if all you're interested in is your influence generation and you don't actually care about building a fleet with lots and lots of fleet power, let's say you don't want to spend the alloys and energy on the upkeep, there is a little trick you can use to make sure that your costs are minimized while maximizing your influence income. So at the start of the game, it's generally a good idea to clear the design of your corvettes, save that empty design and upgrade your ships into this empty design in order to get some extra alloys back. But we're not done with this empty design yet. Oh no, no. What you can do is you can fill up your naval capacity with these empty ships and make sure you also remove the FTL drive. That will reduce the upkeep and cost of these ships even more. The class of ship here doesn't really matter either. If you have access to Let's say you also have access to destroyers and you clear a destroyer design completely of everything. Well, that's only going to be twice the upkeep and twice the cost of a Corvette. And the costs are going to scale with size up to cruiser and battleship. So it really doesn't matter what type of ship you build here. It is simply the naval capacity that ship occupies. Cost will be completely the same. But I have built so many of these ships now. I've, uh, I've, I think I've built 90 or 100 of these A-class Corvettes that are completely empty. Thus, 
I am at my maximum power projection. Actually, I need to build just one more and then I'd be gaining two influence per month at a cost of 16 alloys and around 60 energy. This does also have the added benefit that in the case anyone declares war on you, you can upgrade these ships faster, these empty hulls, into a full design with weapons and shields and armor and plating and whatever you wanted much quicker than it would take to build all of these ships from scratch. And it would also be cheaper. Later in the game, there are of course some extra things we can do to increase our influence income even more. If you are a regular biological empire and you go down the psychic path, well, your empire ruler is almost certainly going to become a psychic unless you've got all sorts of funny aliens running around in your empire that might take over the mantle of leadership. And that should generate you an extra plus 0.5 influence as well. And the trait Deep Connections will give you another plus one influence. Then of course, you've got the Galactic Custodian or the Galactic Emperor. That's going to give you an extra plus five influence per month. If you form a federation, the Federation President at level three for a trade league, level three for a galactic union, and level four for a hegemony will also get plus one influence gain. And finally, once you unlock the ability to have unity ambitions, the will to power ambition will give you a nice flat plus five influence as well. Well, that's how we generate influence. But of course, you need to spend influence on something. For some great examples of how to spend your influence, click the video on screen now.